here we are at the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop in Huntsville, Alabama, and I have Travis Taylor, one of the uh, um, rocket uh, rocket ship Rocket City Rednecks. Rocket City Rednecks. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to screw something up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, he was just speaking on uh, uh, interstellar travel and the need to colonize Mars. Very interesting, by the way. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, could you give us a little bit of more about ba uh, your background? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, my name is Travis Taylor, and you already mentioned that I have a show on National Geographic Channel. It's called Rocket City Rednecks. I'm also a science fiction writer, but I'm also a scientist by trade. I have a, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, I have a master's degree in physics, a master's degree in mechanical and aerospace engineering, and a master's degree in astronomy, and I have a PhD in optical science and engineering, and a PhD in aerospace systems engineering. And so my whole life I've been involved in some way or the other in uh, doing experiments, looking at ways to take humanity out into the stars. I mean, who doesn't want to be Captain Kirk, right? When I, when I was growing up, that's who I want to be, Captain Kirk. So that's what it's all about, is figuring out how we're going to get from here out into the stars. That's what this conference is all about. It's beautiful. Um, so tell me, uh, you've got so many things going on, I don't know where to start, but uh, what's the most uh, near and dear to your uh, heart right now? Well, uh, it depends on what you're talking about. Of course, the most dear, near and dear to my heart is my family, and I'm a very family-centric <laughs> uh, individual. Uh, but if you're talking about more of a professional nature or, or, or hobby-wise or whatever, professionally, uh, I, I really want to see America get back to doing the really awesome things they did during the Apollo era. A lot of people say, you know, our best days are behind us or whatever. I don't believe that. I think that's nonsense. Uh, we just got to learn how to get from here to where we want to be. We did a lot of really cool stuff in the 10 or 12 years that was the, uh, uh, the moon project. Right? We started out putting men into space, and then putting two men into space, and learning how to work around in space, then learning how to go to the moon, land on it, work on the moon. And then we kind of quit doing that. And uh, we look at uh, if we ever want to do more than just put satellites in orbit around the Earth, we're going to have to start going back to the moon. We're going to have to go to Mars. If we're ever going to get to the stars, uh, barring alien invasion, right? <laughs> Uh, whether it be a, a, a good invasion or a bad invasion, uh, we're not going to get the stars unless we get off our butts and get to work. Right. And, and so a big part of that is getting kids to realize they got to put down the Xbox controller, pick up a screwdriver and a soldering iron, and, and go out to the shop and do some stuff. Now, it's okay if they want to take the Xbox controller and take it apart to see how it ticks, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, don't tell Mom and Dad I told you to do that. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, though, I mean, we've got to rekindle things that make us great and that's figuring out how to do things other than just drawing them on paper and making movies about them we need to actually get back to doing it and how do you think uh, we can do that well I think we got to start uh, young and that's part of what my, my show is all about is uh, showing kids and people just in general that uh, you know you don't have to have a billion dollar budget to do a meaningful science project you know in one weekend uh, with about a oh, thousand, two thousand bucks, we came up with an armor system using beer cans and plexiglass and pipe and plywood and fiberglass that uh, we put on a Ford truck, run it over an improvised explosive device and blew the truck up, and we showed that the truck survived fine and the armor only weighed about 100, 250 pounds, where the armor we're using now is extremely expensive, weighs tons, and it is difficult to use. And so that shows that there are things that anybody can do and get out and use their mind and, and play around with things and figure out some cool ideas. So we got to start from there. You know, one of the things I do is I actually go once a month to my daughter's elementary school and I have what I call a maker's club. And uh, they wanted, uh, the teacher said, well, would you do a club? And they said, could you build rockets or something? I said, kids need some more than that. You know, I love to build rockets and, and I build them all the time with my kids and with other, other people and stuff. But... Uh, this Makers Club was about getting the kids in there and we do something with our hands, with hand tools, once a month and we'll, we'll say, okay, this week we're going to build a Roman arch out of styrofoam and hot glue. Wow. And, uh, and, and the kids, who, the, and we'll divide them into teams and the kids who can stack the most book on their arch, I give them some kind of a little reward. You know, one, one week we're, uh, we built an engine using a mousetrap. Right? Very so, cool. so it's little things like that that teaches them to use their brain and think about, hey, you know, I could use this for that. Think about if you're on Mars and your uh, doohickey breaks down that controls the ventilation system uh, for your, uh, uh, your spacecraft. Right? Mm -hmm. All you got is the stuff that's there. You're not going to go to Walmart or Lowe's and get a new one. 
So you've got to figure out how to reverse engineer and figure out a way to fix something with just the stuff you have in, in hand. And that's why the show is actually called Rocket City Rednecks. Because, you know, that's what the farmers who are called rednecks here in the southern uh, United States, they had everything they owned and their family on their farm. And when something went wrong, they were 10 miles from town, take all day on a horse to go there. And so they had to figure out a way to fix it with what they had at hand. They were very family-centric and hardworking. And so that's why it, it, I, I take it as, as a, a, a bit of pride when we call ourselves Rocket City Rednecks because we're looking at rocket science and, and things from the same standpoint. You've got to be hardworking about it. It's got to have a good, good reason to do it, a family-centric sort of approach. And you be clever. You use what you have. You don't have to spend a gajillion dollars to do everything. Right. Don't... You, learn, you need to learn to think like MacGyver. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> MacGyver was one of my other childhood heroes. I was, already, I was already in high school by the time MacGyver came out. But, uh, uh, so it was Captain Kirk and then MacGyver, you know, those kinds of things. And, and so you kind of have to have the, uh, the combination of the two. You know, Captain Kirk did that when he fought the Gorn. I was thinking that yeah. when you said that. <laughs> yeah, he, put, he used his, uh, his science knowledge to beat the Gorn, not, exactly. just, uh, not just his super coolness, right? Exactly, yeah, the... Uh, the uh, rocks. He, he put, the, put the gunpowder together. Exactly. Yeah, I, I love that episode. And when you said that, it came right to my mind. Um, I also loved what you said about uh, the fact is when you were, you were a kid and when I was a kid, even younger than, or older than you, <laughs> but uh, John Glenn and others oh, yeah. were like our rock stars. And uh, Nowadays, no kids even could tell you the name of one. Every time I go to a school or anywhere where there's a, a, enough people, to, you know, big crowd or whatever, talk to I, one of the first thing I ask is, who, who remembers, you know, an astronaut? Tell me their name. Nobody knows any of the current astronauts, right? Because right. because they've become, uh, we've let them become mundane, but they're not. They are still just as hardworking. They're 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 not making a ton of money because we don't let them take the Corvette from Life magazine or Time or whoever it was that gave the astronauts the each a Corvette. Right. right? Now we've got all these regulations on them. They make a, a measly government salary uh, that that could be much bigger if we if we let them take endorsements or whatever. And so they're sort of sacrificing to work long hours, both physically demanding and mentally demanding and emotionally demanding. And so these guys are rock stars. I mean they are. They are more talented and, and athletic and whatever than any super athletic uh, Super Bowl ring wearer or, you know, NBA right. championship guy, Absolutely. you know, whatever. They, these guys are, and, and, and women, are extremely impressive individuals. We should give them that respect. They are rock stars, and we should tell everybody that. We should make our kids realize that's an astronaut. That, that's way better than Taylor Swift. Not that there's anything wrong with Taylor Swift, but this is an astronaut. Taylor right. Swift ain't never been in space. Absolutely. So, um, I like to close my interviews with uh, what I call a weird question. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me something weird and wonderful about yourself or your current projects or anything that your <laughs> fans might not know about you? Weird and wonderful? Wow. I, I don't know about that my fans might not know about me. Uh, <laughs> they know everything. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, weird and wonderful. Well, you know, one of my proud, I'll, I'll tell you about one of the proudest things I've done, and I, I did that recently, was uh, I ran the Marine Corps Marathon. Wearing, really? a, wearing a full body armor suit. Uh, the reason for that was I looked at a lot of details on uh, the injuries that are happening to our soldiers. And they're mm -hmm. losing their legs and their arms, uh, but they're surviving because we have really good torso armor. But we have no, no armor on their limbs, and the troops won't wear them. They say it would slow them down, they won't wear it. And I was thinking, you know, we ought to be smart enough in this country to develop armor that they could run in and be mobile in and do their jobs and give them at least mental protection on their arms and legs. And so me and the guys on the show, Rocket Sea Rednecks, we, we invented an armor suit and weighed the same amount as their armor, it's like 43 pounds. And uh, so I, I did a marine combat fitness test or muted version of it. And, and after I realized I could move around in it, I said, you know what, what better way to prove to the soldiers that we could do this? Maybe be the snowflake that causes the avalanche, right? Get enough right. people think about it to really go do it. Then to put this suit on and go run the Marine Corps Marathon in Washington, D.C. And I did. It took me six hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> Extremely harrowing, painful six hours and 15 minutes. But I did it. And I crossed the finish line. And they asked me, um, well, what kept you going? And I said, I'll tell you what kept me going. When I was uh, talking to a, uh, a Marine drill instructor when I was doing that combat fitness test, he kept telling me, your buddy's laying over there wounded and he needs you. 
You got to keep moving, and it may hurt. You got to keep going. Your buddy needs you. And I told him, I said, I was thinking about it. All you guys out there and women in your in your uh, digicam in your military uniforms, you're my buddies, and you need us. And for me, and you need me to finish this race with this armor suit on, so that people will see it and think we ought to really build one for our troops. We could do this. We should do it. That's one of the things that you know a lot of people may or may not have seen or, or read about or whatever. But I'm really proud of that. Made my mom and dad cry when I crossed oh. the finish line. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Very, very much so. Very cool. Well, uh, thank you so much. And from the Tennessee Valley Interstellar Workshop in Huntsville, Alabama, this has been the Weird View. Thanks so much. All right, thank you.